All right. Good morning and happy Monday. It's our Monday morning prayer time for America. And it's December 21st. It's the shortest day of the year, or some might call it the darkest day of the year. That means it's darkest, longest on December 21st. Um, it also happens to be a day that you're going to be able to see what people refer to as the Christmas star. And um, it, it just so happens that in 2020, the planets are aligning so that we can see in the sky what the shepherds saw when they were um, journeying to find the Savior. I think that's pretty cool that in 2020, probably one of the darkest years, um, at least we can say in our lifetimes, um, that maybe not the darkest years in history, but in, in recent history, that the light, the Christmas star, and the light of hope, the hope of Jesus would be visible in the sky on the darkest day of the year. I don't mean darkest uh, figuratively, I just mean literally. Uh, I'm not forecasting doom and gloom for this day. I, I actually love December 21st or, you know, the beginning of winter solstice because the days begin getting longer starting tomorrow. So we just begin our ascent to spring and summer. That's how I get through Wisconsin winters, y'all. I just start looking at the bright side as early as possible, which is usually right around December 22nd. So um, with that, all that said, we have some dark, dark things happening in our country. There's darkness in the news. There's darkness all around us. There's certainly darkness and depravity in our um, in the leadership in our nation, on all the, the governments, uh, the mountains of influence, particularly government, media, arts and entertainment, uh, places of high, high influence in our nation. And um, if you're like me, you're listening to and reading a lot of information, trying to stay informed about what's going on. And without getting into all the particulars, I just want to say today that the truth is coming out. Hold on one sec, friends. Thanks for holding. I just had to sneeze. So, um, but you guys like me are seeing that truth is coming out. Things are being revealed. We're finding out about the mass amount of corruption, not only in the election, my friends, but in our governmental system for years, decades even. And these are all the truths that are being going to be exposed in the coming days. There is going to be a righteousness that breaks forth like the dawn. I believe that with all of my heart, and I hope that you do too. There is a revival coming. And um, something that I just know to be true is that revival does not come where there is no fear of the Lord. Okay? Do you guys see I'm wearing my faith over fear hat? The only fear that we want and that we welcome is a fear of the Lord, a healthy fear of the Lord. That's a reverence for God. That's a healthy respect for the one who made you and who could end you with a flick of his pinky, uh, for the one who put the planets in orbit and the sun in the sky. We, we need to have a healthy fear of the Lord. Without that, there is no repentance. Without that, there is no mass seeking of the Lord. Why would anyone seek a God that they have no reverence for, that they see no value in, or that they don't understand his power to not only judge men, but to save them, to not only show, bring justice and righteousness, but mercy. It's not until people shake a little bit in the presence of God that there is an actual move of God. And so um, what's the connection here? Well, I believe that we're not going to see this worldwide move of God, which has been prophesied for decades. And it's been told that it's coming in the next um, 10 years, maybe even sooner, like in the next four years. But we've been told that this is the decade for this great, the greatest awakening the earth has ever seen. And my theory today that I'm pitching out to you is how can that move come when there's no fear of the Lord? 
And so enter 2020, enter the, all this crazy stuff that we're finding out has been going on behind the scenes for many years that is about to be revealed and exposed. There are um, prophecies of people being taken to jail and people in high places. And there are reports of many, many, many things being unearthed that, that some people in high places would like to keep buried. I believe this is all working together to bring us to the point where the, the world sees and knows there still is a God and that God makes himself known when he chooses to make himself known. And so some of us have been a little um, despairing or disparaging over the timing, feeling like we're waiting, waiting, a whole lot of nothing is happening. Don't ever believe that. Don't ever believe that. There's always a battle fought in one in the invisible realm before we see victory in the natural realm. Do not be discouraged, my friends. Keep your faith enlarged. I've shared some links in this private group, Wisconsin Kingdom Builders Praying for America, to some incredible prophetic um, instruction or uh, explanations about where our nation's headed, why Donald Trump was chosen to be the president for such a time as this. Um, I don't worship Donald Trump. I believe that he was called and chosen, just like King David was called and chosen to lead Israel out of something and into something else. And that's exactly what Donald Trump is doing. He's not the savior of America. He is just a man God put at the forefront to lead a nation out of one thing and into something else. And so my faith is in the, the hand of God, the will of God, and the work of God. With that said, God chooses to move in the earth through his governing church um, the Bible calls it us the ecclesia. It's a Greek word for the governing church. Friends, it's not enough to just go to church. It's not enough to just sit at church, pray in church, worship at church, listen to sermons at church. We need to be the governing church. What does that mean? We use our authority, our mouths, our lips to declare the law and the rule of our king on this planet. We can supersede what's going on in the natural by being the governing church in the spirit. Are you part of the governing church or are you a spectator uh, in church? Meaning, are you one of the church of Jesus Christ in America that is sitting on the sidelines waiting to see what happens? If you're awaiting to see what happens, Christian, you're not part of the ecclesia. I would strongly encourage you to get off the bleachers, get off the sidelines and get out on the field, um, get into the game and begin to use your voice and the authority that was placed in you when Jesus came to live inside you to be part of the governing church, to declare to the darkness that they must flee, um, to make room for the light to give the angels the word of the Lord to perform because it says in the Psalms that the angelic realms, the, the angelic realm hastens to perform the word of God. In other words, when you declare God's word with your mouth, angels hasten to perform it. They are here to fulfill the word of God on this earth, but they're waiting and listening for the ecclesia to open our mouths and declare it. And so that's why we've been praying every week. We are not going to sit idly by. We're not going to pop a bowl of popcorn and see what happens. That's when ever in any great move in the earth have the people eating the popcorn been the people who've brought change. Whenever have the people sitting in the stands been the ones to be the noteworthy ones in history? Never. It's the ones out on the field. It's the ones running their race. It's the ones fighting the good fight that are the noteworthy ones. And we're not doing this to be noteworthy. My point was just that um, the noteworthy ones are the ones who actually get stuff done. And so if you're not helping get stuff done for the kingdom of light, then you're just a spectator. And I will just say to you, that's not your destiny in Christ to sit back and watch. Your destiny is to be a part of the great move of God that is taking place in the earth right now. And if you're not convinced of what's going on, then you need to be more informed. You, you need to not just wait for God to knock on your door and fill in the blanks. You need to seek. The Bible says, seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. 
um, ask and it will be given unto you. And it's interesting that verse where he says, ask, seek, knock. The, um, the acronym for that is ASK. So ask, seek, knock. The acronym is ask. So get out there and ask. Um, and ask the Lord you know, to lead and guide you to information. Ask people who are informed. Ask people who are confident and faith-filled. Where does your confidence come from? Mine comes from the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. I just read this morning in the book of John. He leads and guides you into all truth. Does that mean I have all truth? No, it means that throughout my walk with Holy Spirit, he's going to continue to lead and guide me into all truth until that day I stand before Christ and all truth is revealed. But I can trust that the longer I walk with Holy Spirit as my guide and as the spirit of truth, I will know and apprehend and attain more and more truth. I wish I could have it all now, but I can't. But I will have more every passing year if I'm seeking the spirit of truth. Listen, there's a lot of spirits in the world. You, you guys might not like this talk, but there is a lot of spiritual activity in the world and a lot of it isn't good. The demonic activity that's been unleashed on our nation and on this world in 2020 is astounding. There's a spirit of death, a spirit of lies, a spirit of intimidation, a spirit of tyranny. There's a spirit of um, abuse and a Leviathan spirit, a Jezebel spirit, you name it. Hell has unleashed. Why? Why would hell unleash to such a great extent other than it takes a lot of joy in it? Because it does. But the other reason is because of what's at stake. Our nation is at a crossroads. That brings us right back to my original point about the governing church. We are the gatekeepers. And the Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Why does it say the gates of hell will not prevail? Because it's talking, he's talking about authority. Hell has power, that's for sure. We've seen it all year long. But hell does not have authority that goes above and beyond the governing church. The disciples of Jesus were given the authority Jesus was given. And if we stand in and utilize that authority, hell cannot over um, rule us hell cannot pull rank on the praying church this is what i want you guys to understand it's a ranking order it goes father son holy spirit the church then the earth so everything on the earth is under our feet that includes satan and his demons that includes the earth curse system. That includes the, even the fall. All of it is under our feet because Jesus gave us a new law of life and peace. The covenant of Jesus Christ that was paid for in his blood is a new law that we live under. So even the old laws of sin and death are under our feet, my friends. We have so much on our side. How could I possibly be here? I can only be here. So I hope you're here with me full of faith and ready to just stay. I've been hearing these um, mixed messages from the Lord, but they're not mixed at all. They just seem mixed to the natural ear. One minute I hear him say rejoice. The next minute I hear him say pray and um, use your authority. The next minute I hear him say stand fast. And so how do you rejoice, stand and pray all at once? Just like that. You rejoice when he says rejoice, you stand when he says stand, and you pray when he says pray. This is what it looks like to be the governing church. There's times where our rejoicing pushes back the darkness. There's times where our standing pushes back the darkness. And there's times when we have to open our mouths and use our authority and pray um, to the God of heaven and unleash the angels of heaven on the darkness in order to push back hell. And so just the idea is just do what he's telling you to do when he's telling you to do it and get with other believers who can hear. If you don't know anybody but me who can hear, then be paying attention to me and I'll point you to those that I'm listening to because I am certainly not any kind of final authority on any of these things. I'm just passing along all the great information that I'm receiving from ones who are wiser than me, more experienced than me, and I'm even going to say much higher ranking than me, because there is even a rank 
in the in the church in christendom in christianity there are those that are generals in the spirit and i'm just listening to some generals who have been in battle many many times and they're going where they're told to go they're taking the ground they're told to told to take and i just get to be a foot soldier in the whole movement so just join with me be a foot soldier for christ and push back the darkness as we push back the darkness there's this there's, there's also an unearthing of darkness more and more is going to be revealed i feel that the lord wants us to say do not despair do not despair do not allow the evil reports of the evil one and those who have partnered with the evil one to make you despair for the earth to make you despair for your children to make you despair for the future do not let the truth cause you to give up hope the lord wants us to see that the truth is always our friend and the the metaphor and the picture he keeps bringing to my mind is surgery when you have a deep deep infection that's all the way down um, you know almost at the muscular level they have to dig they have to go deep through layers and layers of fascia and skin to get at that infection there's a cutting there's a process it's painful the infection is um, gross i mean let's just be honest it's it's green and it's gross and there's a cutting and all this gross ugly stuff comes up and out and then we're not done we don't just cut it open and leave it they cut it open and they begin to release and remove the infection and then they begin to clean the wound and then once the wound is cleaned and sometimes it's cleaned over and over again my son had fallen down a tree like he slid down the tree and tree limbs and branches went into his thigh so deep that they had to numb um, four or five layers of skin with the needles which was just horrific for him and then they had to irrigate the wound i think six or seven times they said we cannot close this wound until we know that there's not one piece of bark twig or tree or dirt in here or he will get an infection and so the process to heal him was more lengthy, difficult, and painful than the actual wound. That's what we're about to step into. The process of cleansing and healing our land is not going to be a quick and easy one. It's not a quick fix, and there is no Novocaine or numbing medication, but there is Holy Spirit. There is the Good Shepherd who leads, feeds, guides and shields us we have the good shepherd he also is called the great physician so whatever metaphor works for you if you just need to look at it as a good shepherd with a bunch of dumb sheep that that works too but the great physician the good shepherd the savior of the world the the king of kings and the lord of lords is who we have on our side for whatever we face as a nation and so in my opinion, Christians right now have an incredible advantage. The praying, hearing, governing church has the greatest advantage of anyone on the earth right now. We are hearing from our King. We see the end, um, not, not in full, in part, because the Bible teaches that we can only see in part, but we see more in part with our prophetic um, leading and the prophetic voices than the rest of the world does and we can be encouraged and then we have the spirit of courage which is the spirit that rests in jesus and we have the spirit of truth to continue to guide us into all truth we are sitting pretty good guys and if you aren't feeling like that right now then what what of the many things i just shared do you need to reconsider what perspective do you need to possibly change a little bit um, or what truth do you need planted deeper in you so that you can be on firm footing, on a firm foundation? Um, I can tell you this, that if Satan can deceive you about what's in here, this is, this is a Bible. If Satan can deceive you about what's in here, in the word of God, then he can deceive you about what's in the heart of God. 
that if he can deceive you about the heart of God, oh, he will deceive you about the will of God because you will expect God to behave however you think his heart is. Think his heart is hard, you'll expect hard. If you think his heart is soft, you will expect mercy. If you think his heart is just careless, he doesn't care, then you will go about your life feeling uncared for. That does not mean he doesn't care. That's all going to be your perception. So I challenge you to know the word of God. Don't just read it, study it. It's not enough to read it. You must study and show yourself approved. There's never been a more important day and hour, at least in my lifetime, where it's been more important to study and show yourself approved. We have uh, attacks on every side. Satan is at the ready with all kinds of lies and people ready to perpetuate them. And if you do not have the truth deep inside of you, written on the tablet of your heart, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable. So get the word of God written on the tablet of your heart. Shore up some of those vulnerabilities and um, pick up your sword, the sword of the spirit and the sword of the word of God, and be useful during this time. Don't be a spectator. All right, this is, that's enough of my coffee talk for the day. Um, let's get into prayer. Today, I just feel led to pray for righteousness to be revealed, truth to come out, justice to be done, but also the mercy of God. Because something I've seen in scripture is that even when judgment is happening, even when um, God is dealing with the unrepentant, he's also simultaneously showing forth his mercy. Why? Well, because he wants the world to know mercy triumphs over judgment. His first desire is for mercy. His first desire is that not one should perish. So we are going to pray for both his mercy and his judgment. We are going to pray that people repent, and we are going to pray for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to guide our leaders for Trump, his legal team, his cabinet. We are going to pray that anybody who's planted somewhere on his teams that is not helping him righteously, that they have an ulterior motive, would be revealed and exposed. We're going to pray for the Supreme Court and for all of the seats of government that the truth would be revealed and that God would do a great purging of the unrighteous and those that are unrepentant and have chosen to build their own empire instead of the kingdom of God. So with that, uh, let's dive right into prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that we get to live in this time, in this day, in this hour, that we get to be a part of this incredible thing you're doing in the earth. Lord, that we don't have to just be spectators, that we can be part of that great cloud of witnesses one day, that we can um, cheer on others to be a part of what you're doing in the earth, like the great cloud of witnesses is cheering us on today. Thank you for the ecclesia, the governing church, the church that rules by bringing your rules and your kingdom's ways onto the earth. And so now personally, as individuals, we ask, may your kingdom come in our lives and may your will be done on earth just as it is written in heaven so that we can be a vessel and an example of what it looks like to be a kingdom building believer. I pray now, Father, for our president, for Donald Trump, that you would protect him, guide him, feed him, strengthen him, shield him, and more importantly, pour out your spirit of truth. May the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Christ be his, Ephesians 1.18. Father, that he would know the greatness of your, your kingdom, the riches of your kingdom, the ways of your kingdom, and that he would align himself with your kingdom's rule. I thank you, Father, for surrounding him with people that are um, building your kingdom as well. They are fulfilling kingdom purposes by helping steer America back on her original course. I thank you for your, that you call America your beloved America, that you are not willing that this nation would perish or anyone in it, but you know that some will choose to perish, Father. So as, as this big separation of the wheat from the chaff and the righteous from the unrighteous and the sheep from the goats is taking place, and it will take place right before our eyes. I pray 
that your mercy would triumph over judgment, that many would repent, Father, that the only reason it hasn't happened yet is because you're giving men and women time to repent and return to you. I pray, Lord, that you'd call them home, those that are willing, that you'd reach their hearts and soften their hearts, that they would return to you and repent before your judgment comes upon them. I thank you, Jesus, for this great separation that the world will know and see that there is a God, that the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the New Testament lives, breathes, and is actively involved in what takes place on this earth and will fear you and revere you once again. I pray, Father, that America would be a nation known for fearing the Lord and honoring your ways. I thank you for returning faith to the public sector, returning faith in you to the schools, to government, to arts and entertainment, to media, to businesses, to family, to the church, Lord. Yes, to the church. Return true faith in the one true God to the church in America. I pray that your whole church, Father, would repent and return to you, that we'd humble ourselves, pray, seek your face so that you would heal our land. I thank you that you first deal with your own family, your own house, and then you deal with the rest of the people. So may we, your body, your church, be found faithful by you, Lord. Heal us and allow us to do righteous acts for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I thank you for saving us from ourselves. And Father, I thank you that you're bringing righteousness to the Supreme Court. You're revealing corruption on every level of government and all three branches, executive, judicial, and legislative, are all being cleansed now by your Holy Spirit, wind and fire. Let your wind and fire cleanse our leaders and our teams of leaders in Washington, D.C. and in every state capital in our nation. I thank you, Jesus, for having your way in this land. I thank you, Father, for your great plan. We trust you, Father, for using America to bring a worldwide revival, the gospel to the nations. I thank you for giving us the joy and the pleasure of being part of advancing your kingdom in the earth. I thank you for putting your words at the tip of our tongue, for giving us the word of God to use like a sword so that we can dispatch angels and push back darkness in the name of Jesus. I thank you for a greater spirit of discernment on the church in America. I thank you for the Christians in China that you love so much, your, your beautiful bride in China that have been so oppressed Father, and so persecuted, and you are going to vindicate them and honor them in Jesus' name. I thank you for exposing the goat nations like China, Russia, and Iran. Lord, you're going to reveal and expose the wicked schemes, and you're going to advance America and Israel. That is your plan in Jesus' name. I thank you that America will continue to protect and guard and partner with Israel in the name of Jesus. And whoever blesses Israel, you will bless. And whoever curses Israel, you will curse. I thank you again for showing the world where that dividing line is in Jesus' name. I love the scriptures in, in, in the Old Testament over and over will you say, then many will know there is, a Lord, there is a God and he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I thank you for being that God and continuing to reveal yourself to a world that really doesn't deserve grace and really doesn't deserve your mercy, but yet you continue to, to offer it. You continue to reveal it. You continue to extend it. Your long suffering, your patience and your kindness is astounding. You're a good, good father. We thank you for continuing to show the earth all of those things and, and making us vessels that we would be part of how you show the world your love, your kindness, and your long suffering. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for aligning us with the right people coming into 2021. So many people that I'm talking to are losing relationships or ending relationships or drawing these thick, dark, dividing lines in relationships, Lord. And I know that it's no mistake that you are aligning us with the right people for 2021. People that will help us run our race, not slow us down. People that will help fuel us for the, the, the road ahead, not weaken us and injure us so that we're sidelined. 
I thank you, Father, for helping your church not to fall for offense and unforgiveness and bitterness because that sidelines believers every single time. Strengthen your church, Lord, with a spirit of forgiveness that we would humble ourselves, forgive and release all those who have hurt us and offended us so that we are not sidelined in our own race, in Jesus' name. I thank you for forgiving us, loving us, and cleansing us, that we don't have to be slaves to the past sins of our lives or any of the present sins knocking on our doors, but we can walk in clean uh, clothes. You've put new white robes on us. You've washed us clean. The stains are no longer there. You don't see them, and I pray that we wouldn't see them either, that we'd see our new identity in you and walk in it. In the name of Jesus, I pray these things. I thank you, Father for the good things you're doing. I thank you that no matter how bumpy the road gets, we have a, such an advantage in you. We have your spirit. We have your promises. We have your provision. We have your kindness. We have your comfort. I thank you that you feed, guide, and shield us. Psalm 23, 1 in the Amplified. I thank you that you lead us into green pastures and you restore our souls. That means you heal our weary minds, emotions and even where our will has not served us well and our will has chosen things that have harmed us you redeem and restore our own wills do that for your people father help us to want what you want and choose what you choose say what you say and go where you go in jesus name i pray i thank you for blessing my brothers and sisters who are praying with me with a blessing that they cannot contain because our cup runs over in you. Psalm 23, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for praying with me. God bless you. I'm going to upload this to YouTube so you can share wherever and however you'd like. And I will see you here in a week. Merry Christmas. I pray that you truly celebrate the gifts, the gifts that you've been given. Um, the birth of our Savior that changed everything for us and every gift you've received from his good heart. In Jesus' name, have an awesome week. See you next time.